welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Danny, and this is Coffee Break with Danny. Today we're here with a Get Ready with me, and I am so excited, so pumped, because we've talked about this before. <laughs> I lost my words there for a second. We've talked about this before where you wake up and you're like, today I wanna do an X, Y, and Z look. And then you sit down and it's very rare that I can actually achieve what I'm imagining. Usually, I'm not upset about what I come up with, but it doesn't look like what I've imagined. Today, the shadow, the lips, everything all came through and that's why I'm pumped. And you're my friends. So we have to be excited together. So I woke up and I was like, I wanna do purple eyeshadow. Like that's it, that's the story. I wanna do purple eyeshadow, I'm gonna make it happen. And I went through a makeup collection and I was like, oh, I don't have as much makeup as I thought I did. This is a good, this is a good thing. I'm not complaining. However, I thought I had more. So we didn't have purple eyeliner. We didn't have uh, like a purpley pink lip, lip liner. That was hard for a second. Uh, but we, we, we did this. And I'm very excited, I'm so excited. I'm like, wow, I haven't done purple in a long time. I haven't done any color in a long time. Anyway, but if you wanna see how I got this look, then all you have to do is keep on watching. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and get started. I do have to warn you though, if you hear laughing, screaming, punching, shrieking, something breaking, I had the brilliant idea to try and get some work done in this mess with my voice here. So this is gonna be an adventure, but you know what? <laughs> Life is an adventure, so we're just gonna roll with it. And you guys are just gonna pretend like there isn't any very loud or violent sounds happening in the background of this video. After all, this is a get ready with me and we're just here to have fun. We spoke about this last week, do you remember? Okay, I went uh, makeup dump dumpster diving and I don't mean really like dumpster diving, I just mean the makeup that I've abandoned that is in like the the rest like with the rest not in my little caboodle sitting here on my desk so i dug through things and i was like oh it's been a minute since i haven't used you hello little baby hourglass uh this is a really good oh i like that i should just turn it around when i'm not using it this is a really good primer it has sunblock it has the blurring effect it has a very silky feeling. A lot of people have said that it uh, breaks up their foundation or that it sort of creates layers instead of just like a smooth blendy look. I haven't had that problem. In fact, I've noticed there have been times where I'll see a picture of myself. <laughs> Let's be honest. Any other moms out there that are in like no pictures because like no one. Okay, don't use this much product. You need like the smallest little bit but you're like a no pictures. You're always the one taking pictures like, oh look, they're so cute, they're playing together. Oh look, what daddy or what step daddy or with grandma. And you're like in none of the pictures. Oh my gosh, I love seeing those posts on social media that say, wow, that's the sunblock component that say, hey dads, like look up every once in a while and uh, capture the moment for your wife. You know, the moments where she's not ready, she's not prepared, but she's just spending time with her kids or, you know, making memories. But like all of the pictures on my phone are of everyone else. But anyway, on the rare occasion that I see a picture of myself and I've been wearing this primer, I don't know, my skin just looks different. So I just wanted to share that passive aggressive anecdote with you guys to make a point about the primer. <laughs> Listen, we're all friends here. This is how we talk to each other. And uh, I told you guys I went digging around in my makeup collection. I found some stuff that I really like, but I can only use when I'm super tan. There, it's, just... it's not a summer video unless I sprinkle that in there, and we know that. This is actually one of my favorite face products. It has like a blur effect technology. I haven't actually noticed that, but I do notice that it's very similar to another product that I have Black Widowed. And that is the uh, Urban Decay One and Done. Yeah, I, I black widowed that product. And you guys remember last week, sorry, I'm getting squirrely, but so here, this is One and Done from Urban Decay. So if you still have that, congratulations. I do too, it's probably expired, but it's fine. I black widowed this product too. Yeah, I was talking about it. I was like, oh, I couldn't be cruelty free all the time. It was very hard. This is one of my favorite blushes. Lo and behold, I'm trying to link it for you guys. And everything that comes up is like, Rockateur, discontinued benefit, discontinued Rockateur, question mark. And I'm like, why does this, why does this happen to me? Like, is it, is it a thing? I feel like it's a, uh, 
like a like a curse, right? Like it's like the perfect shade. When I am like peak of summer, it's really it was just the first day of summer yesterday. But when I'm like peak of summer because I start early because that's how I roll, it's my perfect tan shade. So the Thrive Cosmetics Medium Beige. It has mineral sunscreen in it, so that's also awesome. Do you guys want to come in? Do you want to you want to meet me? Oh, you don't want to meet me that close. Maybe this close. Hold. There we go. All right. So beauty blender as usual. Welcome to my face. Wait. Let's do it again. Circa 2013. Welcome to my face. All right. So a lot of you have asked me why I don't do that anymore, and I don't do that anymore because a lot of beauty friends. I hate the I word. Apparently it has a very negative connotation and it's toxic. A lot of beauty friends that do this kind of content that all came out at the same time or started doing videos at the same time as I did, um, started to say it too. So I was like, no, they can have it. I don't want to say it. And then I don't want to run into the situation where someone's like, oh, so-and-so says that you totally watch your videos and you stole it. And then I'm going to get triggered. And I'm going to be like, um, first of all, and I just, I don't, I know myself, I know myself and I just, I don't, I don't have that kind of grace, you know, <laughs> does anyone else like avoid certain situations because you know, you can't control yourself. Yeah, that's me. That's totally me where I'm like, no, you know what? I'm not even going to look in that direction because I'm going to have to say something and I don't want to do that. Oh, I forgot how much I love this. Like I remember I loved it but I forgot how much I loved it. Yeah, you know what? I can't, don't look at my dry shampoo. I cannot in good faith say how much I love it out loud because I'm gonna discontinue it. In fact, in this given moment, it probably already is discontinued because this is what I do to the things that I love that go on my face, relax. Well, actually, or my nails or stick to my panties. Panty liners, relax. I don't know guys, like why does this happen? Why do I discontinue all the stuff I like? My boys get so excited when they have like a toy or a new brand or anything that they're obsessed with and they release like limited edition ultra legendary stuff. Like that's actually exciting for them because they haven't suffered from the product release exhaustion where like everything is, we, we talked about this last week. Close, I'm pale. Back, it's the real lighting. See, perfect shade. I love that. So they still, they still haven't been exhausted with product releases. I'm not really sure if this is my color right now. It's looking kind of light, but it's the CoverGirl concealer that I was like really in love with in medium 100 or golden natural. It's the True Blend Undercover Concealer. Let's do a little test spot. Actually, that might work. That might actually work. So we don't need to, we don't need to burst that bubble for my kids quite yet. You know, let them believe the ultra legendary, super rare, ultra mid extravagance is exciting. And then when they get old enough and realize that it's just a marketing thing, it's very upsetting, it's super upsetting. I've noticed with certain brands, especially the brands that do lots of product release floods, like ColourPop. Love their collections, but I wish they would maybe take some Adderall. <laughs> like because they need it, not because they're trying to study for a final, just to slow down a little bit. So, you know, just to slow down and let, let a release kind of marinate for a little while. Let us enjoy it before they, they flood us with another one or a new reformulation. Because what I've started to notice is they're redoing a lot of colors. They're just changing the name. And I'm sure they change like a little bit of a percent of this specific mica or whatever or reflect. Like they just tweak it just a little bit. But it's like, it's the same thing. You're, you're renaming, repackaging, and it's like the same thing, especially for the uh, Color Shock shadows. Still love them, still a fan of the brand, but it's like, let's call a spade a spade a spade. That's the same, right? A spade is a spade, call a spade a spade. You know what I'm saying. It's like, I can be a fan, I can like the brand, but it's like, give your customers, which are your fans, like give them a break. Let them enjoy releases before you flood the market with another one. 
and not because this is the thing I don't even see it from a consumer standpoint I see it almost like an emotional an emotional I don't like to use the a word unless I really mean it but it feels a little bit like emotional consumer abuse especially if they are makeup junkies. So like if you're just looking for a green eyeshadow palette and you just happen to find one because ColourPop has one of every color, that's cool. But if you are a makeup junkie where you're trying to stay up to date with all the releases, man, I forgot how much I love this concealer. Love this concealer. Little snoopers. Yeah, that's like super ultra duty coverage. The cover girl, <laughs> you know, I don't even like to talk about these products because I have, I haven't shopped, like really shopped or s stayed in the loop with makeup releases in so long that I don't even know what is still available. For example, I love this mascara. I don't think you can find it anymore. I think it's been discontinued since I've had it, but because I waited so long to use it, it's like, there's new mascaras now. So this concealer is like a mix between both shape tapes, the regular shape tape and the ultra creamy. So it's somewhere in between. It's not as dry as shape tape, but it's also not as hydrating as the ultra creamy. It's somewhere in between, but it has the same amount of like ridiculous full coverage. So if you have your exact shade, I would suggest getting your exact shade for just spot concealing on those days you don't want to wear like a lot of foundation or even any face products just to conceal like, you know, what I was doing down here. And then maybe a shade lighter for your under eye. I don't know, I'm still, I've said it, I said it years ago and I'll still, I still believe it is, don't go too light with your under eyes. That's not really necessary. I mean, for me that's like studio makeup, TV makeup, theater makeup. If you're gonna do that really bright, same shade like it's you gotta know how to do it perfect or it's really gonna look like triangles there's an account on instagram that i love to follow i love her fashion i love her personality i love everything but in every piece of content that she comes out she looks like you know that little clown mime that has the little triangles the white face and the little triangles around the, that's exactly what her face looks like and i'm like why is no one telling her like your concealer is too light. You don't you don't even need that much coverage. She has like perfect skin. Like you see her without makeup on and you're like, save those two hours in the morning, girl, you know? But again, not my circus. Like if it makes her happy, I don't give up. Good for her. But anyway, if my eyes ever look like that, I expect you guys to tell me. This is what I'm getting at. So what was I talking about? The concealer, discontinuing products, did my face. I think I'm just gonna set it a little bit. Should we, should we, no, I need to take pictures today. I was gonna say, should we risk it? Do you remember last week we were talking about, about this? Do you remember? Yeah, you remember, we already talked about it. So in that haul video where I said, big fluffy blending brush and just all over my face, it's almost like a really, it's like if a setting powder really wanted to be a highlighter. It's like that, it's like a highlighting setting powder. Oh, speaking of. Do you guys remember that Laura Mercier one I got? I haven't used it. Oh, today would have been the perfect opportunity. My face would have looked so luminous. Do you think it's too late? I don't know, is it? Let's see. I didn't put that much on, right? Let's see. Oh, maybe a little bit. My nose still looks a little, you know? Not set. Let me set my under eyes and then I'll grab it. I hope I don't, I hope I don't mess this up. Do you guys remember, we've talked about this before, where you wake up and you're like, today I want to do this type of makeup. So I woke up today and I was like, purple. I need purple. I need purple on my face. I need purple on my face. I need purple on my nails. And I think it's because I bought this bathing suit at Walmart and it's all I've been able to think about. It's like, it's almost like a dupe bathing suit. No, dupe is not a right word. It's like an inspired bathing suit. Do you guys remember Laura Mercier? the, what was it called? Translucent Medium Real Flawless Luminous Perfecting Pressed Powder. If this ruins my entire look, you guys are gonna pretend it didn't, and it looks amazing. So we're gonna do just one half and see what we notice. Oh, I'm gonna have to clean my earrings. I don't know if you guys know that or you've even thought about it, but if you guys wear any sort of gem in your ear, 
any sort of sparkly gem in your ear, kind of like your permanent earrings where you never really change them, and you do your makeup, or you have like a serious skincare routine, make sure you clean them because they accumulate all these loose powders and then they don't shine anymore. So if you want them to be super sparkly and look so pretty, clean them. I use like this little gem cleaner from Amazon. It's like a little brush. And then I take a baby toothbrush, like those little tiny ones with little baby bristles, and then scrub it and rinse it, and they look shiny. Right now they don't because they're full of powder, but can we tell the difference? I don't know. I mean, there's no luminosity as far as I'm concerned. This side does not look luminous. However, it does look blurry, right? Look at this side. It's very... You could see the darkness here. You could see the pink here. You could see <laughs> breakouts. I don't think I could do anything except pray for those. Um, here, but on this side, it's just like a blur. It's all just seamless, seamless color. <sighs> okay, you're in Laura Mercy. I don't see what you're doing. Well, I see what you're doing. But now I can't use a cream blur. That's okay. I was planning on using a cream blush because I want to take some pictures outdoors and I love how cream products photograph outside. Do you guys remember our engagement pictures that we just accidentally took when we were in Mexico and we accidentally got engaged? I say accidentally because it was a total surprise. So if you guys don't know our engagement story, by the way, it's been five years. Um, <laughs> if you don't know our engagement story, there's a video. I think it was a get ready with me about it, but we, we took some pictures there and all I put was cream products on my face, cream blush, cream highlight, tinted brow gel, and some mascara, I think. And the pictures came out really pretty. My, do you see my chin looks a little luminous? I guess putting on more luminous powder won't help. But there it is. I feel like I was going somewhere with this conversation. Where was I going? You know, if Mateo was downstairs, I would ask him because I know he'd be right outside my door listening to this entire conversation. And you'd be like, mom, you were talking about X, Y, and Z. And then I'd be like, don't eavesdrop, but thank you. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm gonna jump off camera because my camera's overheating, it's being a jerk, and um, do my brows. I've been doing my brows in these Get Ready With Me's all the time, so I don't wanna bore you with the same like seven minutes of me trying to pretend I have eyebrows. So I'll be right back. You guys remember last week I was telling you that having the boys home turns every easy task into a very long, interrupted, difficult task. I mean, diff difficult is kind of a strong word. I was waiting for my camera to cool down, doing my eyebrows, and I got an Animal Crossing question, and that goes 30 minutes. That's just 30 minutes that I lost that I will never get back. So we're gonna pretend that we're okay with that, and we're gonna do our eyeshadow. And with eyeshadow, I told you guys that we really wanna do something purple. I don't know if I'm going to be able to successfully achieve that because I don't really know what I'm imagining. I'm using my Veramona color switch. This stuff is awesome when you don't have time to wash your brushes in between uses and you don't want color transfer. It's awesome. You could go from using black eyeshadow and then using your brush again and there's no transfer. It's like, oh, what are you doing? Okay, so we have the Urban Decay Prince palette. That's one option for purple. We have the Huda Beauty Mercury in Retrograde. Do you remember the hype around this palette? We got that one. And then I also have an eyeshadow stick in Amethyst and an eye pigment in Purple. <laughs> so what should we do? Let's try a little bit of this pigment. A little swatcheroo action. Oh, look at that. Whew. Oh, I wanted to actually talk to you guys about that because y'all are awesome, educated, informed, seasoned, pickled, and you guys know what's up. Oh, actually, it's pretty. It's kind of silver, but diffused, like on a day with nothing else. That's pretty. Okay, so let's say a week or two ago, that part of my hand was super itchy. This part right here, very itchy for a day. I scratched it. Nothing happened, there was nothing there. You could see nothing, it was itchy for a day and then it went away. And as it went on, it started to change. It started to get sort of like, it looks like melasma. And then maybe a week later, little blisters. And now we're here and it hasn't worsened, but it's also not going away. So 
I don't know if you guys know what that is. Do you see? It's in such a weird, sorry, I'm double jointed. It's in such a weird location, but do you see the, the melasma sort of around it and then just the little blisters right there? And it doesn't hurt and it's not itchy and it only itched that one time and that was it. And so I'm like, well, what would it be? Why? I mean, I think it's contact dermatitis. Like, I'm sure it is, but usually with contact dermatitis, you don't have that color, like the, the melasma looking stuff. So that's a little what's making me kind of, not nervous, but like confused. And of course, you know, Parker is an expert at the dermatologist because he has to go so often because of his melanoma that he's like, oh, let's just make you an appointment. He's like VIP over there. I don't know, could you actually be a VIP at your dermatologist's office? Have I told you guys the story of like, I'm tired of taking my clothes off from Parker? It's so cute and so funny. So you guys, I don't know if, wait, did I say melanoma or melasma? I meant melanoma. So last year, I think it was last summer, they found a big, big, big old, big old melanoma on Parker's like back shoulder. And melanoma runs in his family and it's like exacerbated for him because he's outside and he rode a motorcycle for the police department for years and years and years and years. Not only, not only that, but it's also his hobby, like to ride Harleys. Anyway, so he has, he's, do you say he's, he has melanoma? Like, cause he's always going to get it or he had it. And, uh, when you do have melanoma or they find it, you have to go every 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 month and then every couple months and then every six months and then once a year and he's down to once a year but i'm like that doesn't sound right i feel like once you've had it you really have to get checked out because they could just go from really small and minimal to they can't find the edges you know like where it where it ends and once that happens and that's when you need like the real real treatments as opposed to just cutting out the chunk Sorry, I don't mean to sound super uncouth. It's just who I am as a person. So <laughs> when they found it initially and he had to keep going to all of these follow-ups, he was he, he just came home one day and he was just so defeated. I'm like, what's wrong, baby? Like, why are you so upset? Like, it's good. They didn't find anything, you know? And he's like, oh, I'm just tired of always having to be naked. He's like, I have to take off all my clothes and then everybody walks in and I was like, I'm sorry, what? So I was like, wait a minute, everyone walks in? I need to hear more about this. Oh yeah, that stuff doesn't come off. I need it, I need more details. He's like, yeah, I have to take off my clothes and then the nurse walks in and then the other nurse walks in and then uh, the doctor, like the actual dermatologist. And I'm like, that doesn't sound, that doesn't sound right at all. So do you want me to go with you <laughs> moving forward? Because I'm not sure that's what's supposed to happen at these dermatology appointments. Do you want me to ask my pandas? Like they might be able to give me more, more of an answer. And we were telling, I think I'm gonna go with this darker purple. We were telling his, actually maybe this one and just stick to like the shimmer, shimmer, shimmer everything. We were talking to co-parents mom, which you guys know, we're like ultra besties. Love this woman. She's like my surrogate mom, especially because, you know, thankfully we're lucky enough to have her close by and she gets to spend so much time with the boys and stuff. But we're talking to her and we're telling her that story. I don't know how we were talking about cancer stories, and he st she starts laughing and she's like, oh, okay, Parker, like, you know, why are they coming in there? What are you showing them? Like, what do you got to hide? Like, what's so impressive that everyone needs to walk in? And he just he got all embarrassed. <laughs> I don't know, man. That sounds a little weird because when I went in with that, remember I told you guys I had that little spot on my ankle and it just started to spread and get like really weird and I started to get nervous and the more I would like talk about it, especially with like my friend uh, Paola, my, my nurse friend. She was like, yeah, you should probably get it looked at. I don't know, you know, it's like, uh, you start to get in your in your head. Okay, now I'm gonna get this light, little light purple here, cause I think it went a little too aggressive. A little too aggressive, which happens. And so when I went in, do you know what happened? I took off my boot and my sock 
and rolled up my pants a little bit because it was winter time, I remember. I remember exactly the boots I was wearing, the socks I was wearing. I took off one sock, one boot, and I pulled up my skinny jeans just a little bit. And that was it. That's what they checked. And I was gone. Meanwhile, this dude over here is like stripping down 100%, very Luke Bryan, and uh, then they don't, they don't find anything. So now he's very hesitant to keep going back, but I'm like, you know that you don't have an option. But what we can do is I can go with you. Or I can actually, or you can, I mean, I'm not his mom, I don't want to like mo momize him, like mansplain, momsplain him. But like, I'm like, I can go in and I can be like, look, he doesn't feel comfortable completely taking off his clothes. Is there any way that we can do it where we check areas? Like we can do his bottom first, we can do his top first, we can do the, like, you know, you have to be your own advocate when it comes to doctors and they literally can't say no about any of this stuff. They just have to be like, well, what's your comfort zone? What do you feel comfortable with? What do you want to do? And they just do it. That's, but I, I can't imagine being a doctor that's like, no, this is the way we do things around here and you have to be okay with it. You know, like I don't, I, can't, I don't, I don't imagine a world where that's a thing or a, a doctor's world. And so let's do this down here. Yep, yeah, that's it. Just want a little seamlessness with the purple. We're just taking that deeper shade. How do we get even on that story? Oh, anyway, the thing on my foot or my ankle is ecchymosis. So it turns out that the medication that I take for my migraines. Oh, also, by the way, I'm sharing this piece of information with you because I love you guys. And I have suffered from migraines since... Uh, since I was 21, probably. No, 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 no. 21? No. 24 or 25? It was around the first time I got married. <laughs> Coincidence? I don't know. It's up for debate. But that's when I started to get migraines, and I didn't realize how ridiculously debilitating migraines could be. Like, to me, a headache's a headache's a headache. Well, the first time I had a migraine, I literally thought I had a brain tumor, and I needed to go to the emergency room. I went to the emergency room. And... They gave me, gosh, I don't remember what it was called. You put it under your tongue and you let it dissolve. But what happens? You fall asleep for seven hours. So like, to say it's a migraine medicine, okay. But is it a migraine medicine or is it just making you sleep through the pain? And then you wake up and it's gone. Like you're writing out, you're writing out the migraine by sleeping. Well, now at my age, I can't be asleep for seven hours during the day when I have a migraine. And so I tried a million different medications and they all either made me super sleepy, I couldn't take them with my ADHD medication, or they gave me the worst feeling of being hungover the next day. So when that happened, I was like, okay, I really need to figure this out. So my primary care was like, you know, I don't know how open you are to experimenting. She's like, but there is this combo that I suggest people try. And it's not a treatment that usually is suggested for migraines. I mean, it's not risky or anything. Like I'm not asking you over here to like, you know, go to the top of a mountain and like hunt an eagle and then like find a newborn baby unicorn and then get a cauldron. Like it's not like that. It's just not medication that is used to being used for migraines. She's like, try it and see see how, you see the, just, uh, I'm gonna put the mirror of shame over here. She's like, try it. I don't know, you know what, speaking of trying it, I'm sad to report that I don't own any purple eyeliners. And when I say sad to report, I mean like for real sad to report because purple is one of my favorite eye colors to use because brown eyes, purple, it's like the best combo. Anyway, so take notes. I'm not a medical professional. I'm not giving you medical advice and uh, I'm not telling you to do this. Okay. Just this is me protecting myself legally. But if you suffer from migraines and have a difficult time finding a migraine medication that doesn't have like lots of side effects or makes you sleep for seven hours, you can't take with other medication, ask your doctor about taking sumatriptan, which is usually used for migraines, but like a really, really, really low dose, and naproxen together. The landscapers just got here. We're just gonna roll with it. You know what, this is today, this is the, this is what today is gonna be. So sumatriptan, 
and naproxen together, I take them and in 20 minutes, I feel better. It is awesome. When she prescribed that to me, I was like, the only times I have ever been prescribed naproxen were for like muscle pain or pre-surgery, post-surgery. It's an anti-inflammatory. So I was like, well, that's not super weird, but I'll try anything. Let me know, I'm, I'm game, let's do it. So sumatriptan and naproxen, and I think the sumatriptan is like super minimal dose. And I found that when I know I'm getting a migraine, I'll just take an aproxen. It's 500 milligrams, by the way, but I'm 140 pounds, almost six feet tall. The 500 milligrams of aproxen. So a leave over the counter, I think, is 200 milligrams, maybe 100. It's a smaller dose. A leave is an aproxen. It's 500 milligrams of aproxen, and I'm like, I get ahead of it, and it's gone. It's crazy. I'm like. Are you guys gatekeeping this super awesome migraine secret from the world? Because if you are, that's not nice. That's not nice. And that's not nice because if you suffer from migraines, like it is no way to live like with that type of headache. It's, how can I describe it? For me, it starts off with like a normal headache. It feels different than a normal headache, but like I know the difference, but it just feels like a normal, am I getting a headache? Like it feels far away. So it feels super far away. It's kind of faint for a couple of hours. And before I used to get a migraine onset and it would last a few days and then boom, it would hit. Now I get a few hours warning before it just peaks. Light sensitivity is probably my first symptom that I get is light sensitivity, any kind of light sensitivity. I get blurry vision. I start to get nauseous. My head feels sort of bobbly, like it's a thousand times heavier than the rest of my body. And most recently, in my old age, I've gotten to enjoy having bowel issues. You know what I'm talking about? I just don't like saying the D word. I started to get bowel issues from how hard, how strong the pain is. And, you know, I don't know how in tune you guys are with your body, but for me, like I've always been super connected with any sort of differences that happen in my body. And I was like, okay, people don't talk about this, but are my bowel issues related to migraines? Because I've never heard of that before. You go down the Google, we're gonna do this again. You go down the Google rabbit hole and apparently it's another common symptom or side effect of, wait, do you say symptom or side effect of a migraine is some people get bowel issues. So I was like, wow, this is exciting. This is one more thing as an old person that I get to look forward to. Why doesn't anyone talk about that? This is exciting. It's not really exciting. I'm obviously being sarcastic because who wants to have like stomach issues on top of blurry vision, on top of the headache, on top of, it's just, it's not fair. I don't know if this is, if this is highlightery enough for the look we got going on here. Let's try. Is it? Oh, I love how these products, the butter, the butter products from Physicians Formula, they have the beautifulest, beautifulest, oh boy, am I getting a migraine now? Because my brain's not working. They have the prettiest smell, scent, scent. I really need to work on being a little more classy with the way I talk, because I'm kind of uncouth sometimes, most of the time, most, 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 of, I really like that. Do you see it's very like blendy? It's like really pretty. Although my makeup's kind of dramatic. It's a lot more bam than I was anticipating. Is anyone complaining? Cause I don't think I am. Really don't think I am. Look at how pretty that purple is. It's all thanks to that, that eyelid shade. I don't even know if Milk Makeup makes this, but you know what? Let's just err on the side of caution or uh, predictability or what we do around here. And I'm pretty sure these, you can't find these. Let's just, let's just pretend because you probably, you probably can't. 
that's uh, me being, so I'm very sassy in this video today. All right, I'm jumping off camera, doing my lashes. I'll be back and we'll finish lips and that's it, that'll be it. All right, you guys, we finished lashes. What do we think? I don't know what mascara I use. I just remember that when I looked down, all of this was in front of me. So. <laughs> I went digging through my makeup collection, which I've been seriously wanting to declutter, but like serious declutter? I don't mean like, oh, I think this is expired. I mean like go through it and be like, I haven't used you, psh, I haven't used you, psh, and just condensing everything down to my little caboodle. Like that's, that's what I'm imagining in my head. But I guess I thought it was a bigger collection than it actually is because when I went over there, you saw how much purple eyeshadow I could find. In the past, that was never a problem. I couldn't find a purple eyeliner and I was trying to find a purpley pink lip liner. I think I have like four lip liners. So this is all we got. It is from ColourPop and I'm pretty sure it's from the previous formulation. The shade is Oh Snap. So we're gonna sharpen this little guy and we are going to fill our entire, the whole situation. So it is like a neutral nudie pink because I am dying to use the Alice in Wonderland lip gloss. I forgot how much I like this color. So that is Oh Snap. Reminds me a little bit of Max Soar. It's just not as pink. And then this is the gloss that I was telling you guys about from the Alice in Wonderland launch, the ColourPop one. So it's like an icy, it's an icy gloss that has like a duochrome sparkle in it that's very, oh, speaking of blue, did you see how cool, there we go. Did you see how cool the camera got? Uh, it has like a duochrome uh, sparkle. It's like a pinky blue duochrome. It's exactly, exa oh, I love these moments where like it translates into exactly what I'm imagining. So I was hoping that the duochrome sparkle would pull a little bit purple because of my eyeshadow and the lip liner. And there it is. Oh, that's pretty. And I can't stop, like walk away. This is when you walk away. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's pretty. What do we think? is that a pretty combo? All right, you guys, that is it for this Get Ready With Me. I really hope that you guys enjoyed hanging out. Like any and all my Get Ready With Me's, all of the items, products that I use, as long as they haven't been discontinued, will be listed and linked in the description box of this video. If you have any questions or comments, let me know, and I will make sure to get back to you. Uh, but other than that, I think that's it. I love you guys so much, and you know what to do. If you found this video useful, entertaining, and learned something, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, this coffee break is over. Bye, guys.